So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to cut down a PTO drive shaft. This is a common problem that people have from time to time, and it can really damage your equipment. So if you have too short of a drive shaft and you go to lift up on a piece of equipment, it puts pressure on the shaft of the equipment and on the tractor itself. You can actually push seals in and damage equipment heavily. So you want to always make sure there's some play in your drive shaft and it doesn't bottom out like this one's doing when I back the tractor up to this piece of equipment. Let me show you how we can cut this down and make it nice and safe. All right, so drive shafts are in two pieces and a lot of people have misconceptions that you just, well, cut whatever length you need off of one of the sides of a drive shaft. See how they slide in and out. One has a larger shaft, one has a smaller shaft that fits inside of this other one. And whenever it comes to drive shafts, you have to cut both sides the same exact length in order to take off your total overall measurement. So for example, we're gonna take off a little over an inch here. It looks like what I need to clear for this new tractor. So I'm gonna take an inch off of this side and an inch off of this side. Now something very important to note, you see how I leave the shaft sticking outside of this protective cover? You always wanna leave it at at least about an inch. You don't have to go as far as I did right here. So another problem, a lot of people will go cut straight through the plastic shroud and the shaft itself. Well, it makes it a nightmare when it comes to lining up. See, you want the shaft sticking out of the protected shield so you can see how to line these two pieces up and get them to slide together. All right, there we go. Then you can work the shield together. If you cut everything off the same exact length, you won't have the shaft sticking out in order to be able to line up and fit together. So for starters, I'm gonna cut my shroud back about another inch, and then I'm gonna take an inch off of this shaft and repeat it on the other side. An angle grinder with a cutoff disc is a great way to cut this. All right, there's my shroud cut. Now let's move on down to the shaft. All right, now we're gonna repeat this on the other side. Since my shroud's already cut back a little further than it needs to be, we're just gonna trim the shaft here and still leave some sticking out. All right, now this is very important. You've created a lot of burrs right here, so I like to take a small flat-sided file, and on the smaller diameter shaft, we're concerned about the outside edge of the shaft, getting those burrs off, because this one fits inside of that other shaft. And on the larger diameter shaft, we're gonna get the burrs off on the inside. A round file also works very well for this. All right, now we'll verify that these two slide together okay, which they do, and you can also grease up the shafts if you need to. Let's go test fit this on the tractor and always take off a little at a time. You can't add it back, but you can come back and take more off if you need to. All right, I can already tell this is gonna be tight, but we're gonna back it up and check. You see, I've gotta come back about that much more get my three-point arms to match up with equipment. And that's about what I have available on the drive shaft. I'm gonna pay attention as I lift this up and down that there's no binding. All right, check this out as I ease back out. See the shaft bottoms out. About the time my three-point arms line up and I just lifted the equipment. And I'm lifting it with the drive shaft. That's not good. So we're gonna go back and take about another three quarters of an inch off of both sides like I just showed you. All right, so I've been testing this out for a couple of days, and if you look at the difference between this shaft and this shaft right here, it's about an inch and a half, and as I lift up to the highest point that I can go, I see the shaft go in, but I still have about three quarters of an inch of play right there, which is sufficient. I've tried to keep this one really close because I'm also using this shaft on another tractor that needs longer reach. But I have a nice, safe amount of play right there and slipping between the two shafts without potentially damaging bearings or seals. All right, hopefully you learned something and enjoyed that. Coming up in the next episode, we're gonna find out, can we use this large eight inch wood chipper on a 24 horsepower tractor? I'm curious to figure this out. Catch y'all in the next video.